Robert Hur, the former special counsel who led the investigation into President Biden's mishandling of classified materials, has been giving evidence today on Capitol Hill. Mr Hur caused quite the stir last month when he cited the president's memory lapses as cause for not bringing charges against the president. In his report into a year-long investigation, he concluded there wasn't enough evidence to pursue charges, even if the Justice Department had allowed him to indict a sitting president. Joe Biden, he concluded, was a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory, and prosecutors would have a hard time convincing a potential jury that he was a criminal. We interviewed the president and asked him about his recorded statement. Quote, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote. He told us that he didn't remember saying that to his ghostwriter. He also said he didn't remember finding any classified material in his home after his vice presidency. And he didn't remember anything about how classified documents about Afghanistan made their way into his garage. My assessment in the report about the relevance of the president's memory was necessary and accurate and fair. Ahead of the statement, the White House issued a lengthy memo pointing to the key page in Hur's report in which he concluded he could not prove that Mr Biden retained these classified documents willfully. And in committee, Hur got a rough ride from both sides. The Republican chair, Jim Jordan, accused Joe Biden of holding on to secrets to make money off his biography and to burnish his own political image. Hur agreed with that assessment. He knew the rules, he broke them because he was writing a book. And you further say, and he began meeting with the ghostwriter while he was still vice president. There's the motive. Mr. Hur, how much did President Biden get paid for his book? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure if that information appears in the report. It sure does. There's a dollar amount in there. You remember? I, I don't, it, it may be eight million. If eight that's million added. dollars. Joe Biden had eight million reasons to break the rules took classified information and shared it with the guy who was writing the book. But Democrats said there was a clear difference between President Biden's response to the investigation and that of Donald Trump, who is now on trial for obstruction. Donald Trump is charged with willfully retaining classified documents and conspiring to conceal those documents. And he's facing additional charges for lying to investigators. Isn't that correct? Those are allegations that are in a pending a matter of public against record. former President Trump. And the reason why President Biden is not facing a single charge, Mr. Hur, is not because you went easy on him, but because after reviewing 7 million documents and interviewing nearly 150 witnesses, including the president himself, you could not prove that he had committed a crime. Seema, the president's team have been riding a, the crest of a wave since the State of the Union. Um, he was quite energetic on Thursday. He's been out on campaign ever since. Are we back to the old arguments about his memory? Well, I mean, those arguments have been sort of you know, plaguing him this whole year. I mean, you see it in the polling, you hear it when you talk to voters. And clearly, the State of the Union address was really an attempt to forcefully, you know, tell you know the american public like you know no i'm not you know, i'm still energetic i've still got it and um and it was actually really interesting so I, I had seen uh, the president in, uh, in los angeles two weeks ago um when i was covering a fundraiser and then also an event and you know it was it was no noticeably he was you know his voice was softer he did look you know older than he did you know a couple of years ago as we all do um but it, it, there was such a contrast with what we saw on thursday night at the state of the union address and I mean, he had an audience of what i think 32 million people i mean he, it was his biggest audience yet and it was clearly an attempt to you know to push that argument away the question is will that remain and what happens between now and november because there's plenty of opportunities to make other you know to make missteps or you know to if, if we see him you know again you know when he's sort of talking softly or, you know, perhaps looks physically frail. Um, so it's just, there's, there's a lot of time between now and November. But I thought there was a, a key uh, bit, of, bit of evidence today uh, in this, this, this case, Seema, uh, and it was this bit. It was, the, it was in relation to Trump's constant argument that there's a two-tier system of justice in America. Mr. Hur was asked whether the Attorney General did pressure him to make changes to his report or request any changes to it, and he said, no, he didn't. How important is right. that? Because he is it a is, Republican. Is, right. I mean, it is important, but also, I mean, if you, unfortunately, you know, the, the nation is so polarized. If you talk to a Democratic voter, they will largely, you know, agree with the, the decision here in terms of the president. If you talk to a Republican voter, they will, you know, a, a Trump, President Trump supporter, they will, you know, 
agree that you know that there's a two-tier system of justice one for republicans and one for democrats so well i think it is a key distinction um i think for the for most voters in this country unfortunately because it's so polarized it, it won't it won't affect their opinion kevin uh, you could see what republicans and democrats were trying to do today draw distinctions um certainly from the republican perspective what they're trying to do is tie joe biden to the same investigation that's going on in mar-a-lago but but it's the way that joe biden responded and the way donald trump got in the way of an investigation that separates the two cases isn't it yeah that's it was a remarkable day of uh proceedings that you know we saw from over the other side of the atlantic and it that to, to us you know simplifying it seems to be the fundamental difference that the way joe biden responded to requests for information was totally different and our observation here is that uh president trump uh willfully obstructed the process and is on the record as encouraging others to to do the same and at the same time it's also a matter of record not opinion that he's facing multiple criminal indictments this coming year so it, it was today for for those of us in in europe a remarkable display of the polarization of uh, American society and politics. I thought it was fascinating from a political and communications perspective, how both sides were were using their own montages of clips to, to make their points. Mm. Um, I, I was gonna ask you about that. Do you, do you, yeah. do you think, I mean, I, I look at the, the way committees run in, in the UK and, and over there, and I, I must say, I wouldn't want to appear in front of a UK committee, in, in front of the Commons committees, because I mean, you look at the post office or you look at the way the COVID inquiry has been run, it's much more forensic. Whereas today, there's a lot of grandstanding goes on. Oh, uh, well, actually, to be, there is. But I mean, I also think there is a pile of detail uh, that we see in these proceedings, as well as the grandstanding, which is definitely more uh, in, intense than, than on this side. But for balance, I would say the fact is, of course, that it's not an invention that President Biden um, has suffered from incidences of, of of memory failure, where he does seem to be, you know, a, a, what he is, a, you know, an older a politician. And you know, the former special counsel didn't make that up. You know, that's a reality that millions have seen on their TV screens. So. I mean, today I thought was brutal at points, um, but a, a, a manifestation, I think, of what's to come in 2024. Yeah, Jim Jordan, Seema, was, was very clear about what he'd forgotten, uh, specifically the year that his eldest son, Bo, died. This is how the president responded to that when the report first came out. There's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. Let me tell you something. Some of you have commented, I wear since the day he died, every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of... Every Memorial Day, we hold a service remembering him, attending by friends and family and the people who loved him. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to remind me when he passed away.